What's up? 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 No, no, wait, that was no good. What's up? 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 Happy birthday, NJ. What's up? What's up? Oh, so you saw the What's Up compilation then. Did you like it? Do you think it was good? No, oh, so fair, fair, fair enough, I guess. So you're going you're gonna to make it for the WrestleMania review, yeah? All right, that's good. That's good. Sorted. And, and, and Jay, and Jay, whoa, whoa, whoa. I've got some great news for you. Whoa, Firstly, whoa. happy birthday. Come here, brother. Sure. Give me a hug, brother. That's right. They're going to be there for WrestleMania. I've got a call from them too. You've got a call from them too? Yeah, I'm pretty surprised at this. So it's going to be a big thing for us, Mania. Good stuff. I'm, I'm really glad they're going to be there. Anyway, let's, let's, I'm time. in a good mood. Let's take this mood to the review. Come on, let's go. With WrestleMania being a big deal, nothing gets bigger than this. Oh, tell me about it. It's going to be so much better with them there at WrestleMania, isn't it? There's going to be a big surprise for oh. every YouTuber that's watching us to, on WrestleMania. Ah, oh, that's just going to be awesome. Anyway, let's get back to business. Firstly, did you like your little birthday present that we uh, that we got for you, the WhatsApp compilation? How good was that? It was awesome! Indeed. So not only is it NJ's birthday, as you guys all know, but it's also Elimination Chamber time. We are the British Fist. Catching! Back here in a, in a mirrored video, we got what we want. So, yeah, there we go, eh? NJ, <laughs> do you want to do your little uh, thing? What's up? We're going to do Booker T's five time, five time, five time, five time, five time thing there. I'm also Mr. Parkin, the man with the mustache, as we should all know. Hashtag Parkin's mustache. Subscribe down below. Comment your thoughts on Elimination Chamber down below. And um, this wasn't a bad pay view, I thought. It was pretty damn good. Okay. There's some good spots, some bad spots, and some okay spots. But. All I'm going to say now is please make sure you contact us in the links in the description box below. Yes, and thank you for sending in your WhatsApps. And if you haven't seen your WhatsApp yet, it will be in the outro at the end of the video as we separated them out a little bit. But thank you for everyone um, for sending them in. And if there are any viewers who feel that they wanted to take part, I'm going to be adding a whole new video of newcomers to a video on my channel to look forward to that. Should be pretty good. I must admit I enjoyed watching those WhatsApps going simultaneously. Let's get started with the review though, NJ. Big Show versus Alberto Del Rio started at the show. Um, was you surprised that whatever championship match opened the show? With the amount of times people have been bashing, knocking down the World Eric Championship, I don't think the WWE care that much, which is a bit of a shame for SmackDown and for a championship that is my favourite championship. Of all the championships so far. Yeah, I must admit, I, I never really like it when they start it off with the World Championship, but they seem to do it a lot right now. Also, the whole idea of having a normal match after they just had two last man standing matches really didn't make that much sense for me either. But they were trying to go off the whole thing that Del Rio had never actually technically pinned Big Show anymore. So that was the pretty much the story here. The match was pretty good, in my opinion. I felt this was a pretty decent, solid opener between the two. I mean, I really do think a lot of people do uh, under, under, uh, underrate Big Show as a worker. As I do feel for a guy his size, he does allow a, a good David and Goliath story to be told, which is what I fear was being told here. I look at this match and yes, it was okay. I wouldn't say it's brilliant. I much prefer the Big Show and Sheamus feud. This one looks like it's over now because Dario's wound, Dario's wound, mm. retain, retain. He's done it again. So it should be over now. Del Rio gets the win clean. So this hope, this ends this feud now, which I think is exactly what they should do going into WrestleMania. The match was going along really well until that massive botch where Del Rio missed that kick to the head. Uh, yeah, that was a really, really bad botch. But he won by a submission. Uh, were you also surprised that Ziggler didn't cash in here? So there was a lot of people thought that he may cash in at some point. With I? me, uh, taking the advantage of Big Show's knockout punch and stuff would be a good way to cash in. But two things. Number one... What happened later in the night gives me a better reason why Del Rio, sh I mean, Ziggler should cash yeah. in. And second option, 
he's going to probably cash in at Mania, which is a really good move for an uprising star. We'll see what they do with Ziggler's money in the bank. Looks like they're keeping it in his pocket for now. We have Miz versus Cesaro up next for the US Championship. Um, I, was, I must admit, I was, I was slightly looking forward to this match. I like the idea of these two going together. You had Miz, you had Miz with the injury after the attack from Cesaro and Royal Warrior just bashed him and bashed him and bashed him in. And he, he was very taped up. And there was some good psychology here with Antonio Cesaro focusing on the arm. And I thought this match was pretty solid until the finish, which I, I understand why I was there, to be honest with you, with the, with the continuance of the feud onto WrestleMania. Well, with me, um, I was a little bit disappointed from the first match, which I felt was done pretty good. This one didn't feel as good, but for a Miz and Zara, two good performers, it was a good match for this pay-per-view. Them continuing the feud, maybe they're building up to something. Yes, we keep mentioning Christian's possible return, but if they can continue this feud, at least it's given Miz a mania match. Indeed, and it was just, in my opinion, this was there to further a long storyline. I mean, you had the whole spot where Miz accidentally low blows Cesaro and that causes the DQ. And after the match, the Miz gave him a real low blow. So it seems like they've done this match to keep a storyline going and continue this on to WrestleMania where they'll probably have the blow-off match and maybe Miz win that belt after Cesaro's had it for quite a long time now. Miz getting it. I thought it was going to go probably to Christian, but if it goes to Miz, at least it's given Miz the importance before hopefully he progresses to the main event. And the other thing is, they're continuing the Miz with the figure four. Maybe it's going to lead to a Ric Flair thing. We'll give our views probably in a later video, but this was an okay match. You notice how the crowd popped every time Miz did something Flair-like, like the top lock or tried to get the figure four leg lock. That is important here. Uh, the one and only Elimination Chamber match was next up. We had the SmackDown Elimination Chamber match for the number one contendership for the WrestleMania, uh, for the World Weight Championship match at WrestleMania 29. Jack Swagger, Randy Orton, Mark Henry, Kane, Daniel Bryan, and Chris Jericho. Um, I felt this was a pretty good Chamber match. I pretty much enjoyed this. Um, got a good amount of time. I uh, just want to quickly comment on Swagger's new music first. It was a little bit... I'm not really sure this is the right music for Swagger, but I feel they do have the right manager with him, and I'm glad that, especially with the result and everything that they're at least trying to do something with Jack Swagger where he doesn't necessarily feel irrelevant. Well, with the opening promo, the opening speech from Jack Swagger and his manager, this warmed him up, continued to show him that he's going to probably be all... Oh, SmackDown's trying to make him become a big thing on the show by giving him his own little startup. So I felt that this was a warm-up for the match. Yeah, Jericho and Daniel Bryan started us off. I bet the YWC was jizzing their pants at that prospect. And the fact that they, they gave us this, yes, it's not a one-on-one -on -one match. It was the Elimination Chamber. But with a match like this, two performers who could quite easily go on and have their own feud against mm. each other when Team Hell No break up. So I thought that was a good start between these two. There was a lot of good storyline continuance in here as well. You had, the, you had the whole thing between Daniel Bryan and Kane. They had their little scuffle, which... You imagine is going to enter them, you know, breaking up possibly at WrestleMania or possibly even a match at WrestleMania, possibly. Well, again, they're still tag champs, so I'm thinking they need to drop the championships to make them, like, once the championships are off, they have no reason to continue teaming up with each other, so they have a fight against each other. So when one of them screws up and they lose the championships, then a feud's going to happen. They're teasing it, teasing it, teasing it, so I expect it to come sometime soon. And I believe in this Elimination Chamber, things really started picking up. When Mark Henry got in there, he eliminated Team Hell No very quickly. Um, but he was quite dominant here. Even though Orson did eliminate him, he needed some help from Jericho and Swagger to actually to, did, to eliminate him. But he still looked very strong in this match from what he was. And even even fucked everyone up after he got pinned. So. The thing I like about this is that Mark Henry, he's keeping his dominant streak going. He gets eliminated, he comes back in, does more. Booker T and Theodore Long and other rest had to come down. I was really hoping when they were showing Booker T walking past him, he was going to take out Booker T. But what I'm going to say is that this was a good thing for Mark Henry. Got me more behind Mark Henry and wondering what they're building him up towards. You notice how also how the crowd popped when Mark Henry came back. Shows that the crowd just love an ass kicker. Um, and then we get to the final three, which Swagger, Orton, and Jericho. You know, again, it was a very nice way to finish this chamber, in my opinion. Was very, very surprised when none other than Jack Swagger got the win after it seemed like Randy Orton had the match in the bag. And you give your quick thought, because I believe we have some very differing thoughts here. You give your thoughts on Jack Swagger winning this elimination chamber. I think it will come to a surprise 
There's a lot of to a lot of people in the YWC this result. There was me looking at Chris Jericho returned. He could have done so really big. He could show that he's a winner. He's a true main eventer. He could have won this match. Yes, I've noticed other people were predicting him too. But I think Jericho could have really benefited from this. Autumn when he eliminated Jericho, I was hoping, oh, please, no. But then when Jack Swagger did the roll-up, it was fair because it was a roll-up, not a clean pin over Autumn. But Jack Swagger winning, he's just recently returned. He's not really been a main event for a long time. So for him to be put into the chamber, I thought it was just going to be, ah, oh, he's going to be one of the early eliminations just to be put in there for someone to work off, like, someone to make Jer Jericho to look better, how well he can perform against Swagger. But now Swagger's gone on, just returned, back in the main event slot, back in the World Championship slot. I think they've really not really built up Swagger's return well enough to make me think this is a good move. I think the more important thing to look at here is the storyline that you could get, especially when you look at the way Swagger has been brought back with Zeb Cutler and the way that Zeb Cutler has been cutting promos on people getting through the borders of America. And if you really think about it, even though Jack Swagger isn't really built up to that main event slot, you have what I believe is a very culturally relevant storyline in Del Rio versus Jack Swagger. You have this this guy with an American manager who believes that, that Mexicans shouldn't be allowed past the border. And on the other side, you have a baby face Mexican. So to me, Swagger winning, even though I don't think it was the best match at Mania, doesn't really feel WrestleMania worthy. I do feel, however, that this is a WrestleMania worthy culturally relevant few, which I believe could, they could do a lot with, personally. The only thing I hope from this is if someone swagger wins at WrestleMania, then we have the big cash-in, because I can really see Zagler, Ziggler, Zagler, that was a tag name, wasn't it? beating Z uh, swagger. swagger. I can really see that happening, so maybe it's more, don't be Del Rio who are trying to push. You can take the belt off Swagger if he gets it. I think that would be the way to go. Yep, I, I can I can understand why they had Ziggler. Uh, I can understand why they had Swagger win this. They've been setting this. You know, a lot of people call this. They have been setting this up using the promos and everything. So I believe this this was the right decision. In all honesty, even though they could have had a Jericho, they could have had a Norton. But I think it's a very culturally relevant story now, which I think WWE need a lot more of. The Shield versus the Breakfast Club in a six man tag match. Um, the first thing I noticed from this match was compared to Sheamus and Cena, Ryback got crickets. You know, he didn't really get that much reaction, which is kind of strange because generally Ryback gets a lot more reaction than those two. But when you got to the heat segments, the crowd did want Ryback in there, so it did come back eventually. The only reason Jack's, uh, blah, 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 Ryback didn't get the crowd going is because he didn't walk down the ramp going. <laughs> That's very true. I enjoyed the way this match started off with the brawling. Uh, I also liked how every time the baby faces got some hope spots in there, the heels, i.e. the shield, used the numbers game to get the advantage back. I feel the booking was pretty much spot on here with the shield generally being the better team than the breakfast club who generally aren't seen as a team. Um, you know, and the, the ending came when the shield get the victory after Reigns spears Sheamus through the barrier and then Reigns spears Ryback while Ryback had Rollins up for the shell shot. And I think to me personally, I really felt the baby faces should have won here, but I can't complain about the Shield winning. You look at it, it's a, it's a dominant faction in WWE. You look at the Aces and Eights compared to the Shield, at least the Shield can freaking win. Exactly. The thing about this is that I'm personally being like as exactly what I said in the predictions. I'm really glad they did this. Yes, it looked like the faces were going to get the win. So I think the way they did it, the heels dominate throughout the match, make it look like the faces are going to win, but give the heels the win. It was a very nicely done match, nicely done finish. I believe the heels should have won because from Raw onwards, I really believe the faces are definitely going to get booked quite strongly, especially Cena, who's going to get to The Rock. And especially after the main event on this pay-per-view, Cena needs to look good. So I think he's going to get heavily booked. So for the Shield to get a pay-per-view win before something big happens for them at WrestleMania, I feel this was a good way to go. It's a pretty solid match. I'm not going to go ahead and say this is a good or great match because of the fact that you know the YWC is just going to overrate it. You know, the Shield with their guys have beaten John Cena, Sheamus and Ryback, the products of the system. You know, the YWC and RBC are going to overrate this match. The reason why I felt the babyfaces should win here, I know Cena is going to be facing The Rock at WrestleMania. That's set in stone. But the last time Sheamus got a pay-per-view win was SummerSlam, which was August. That was six months ago. The last time Ryback got a pay-per-view win 
was Money in the Bank, which is, I believe, seven months ago. So you're trying to build up these guys as top baby faces, but they haven't had a pay-per-view win in six or seven months. And that's not really how you build up a top baby face. And let me say this as well. It's a lot harder to build a baby face star than it is a heel star, which is why I felt the baby faces really should have won here. But I'm not going to complain. We'll see where WWE go with this. Very true, because I believe now, especially... It's the last pay-per-view before WrestleMania. We have a few shows leading up to WrestleMania. I really believe that what we wanted to see, or what fans wanted to see, maybe the faces are going to get their wins, the overcoming the heels up to WrestleMania. And hell, a faction is being booked strong, which is more than what we can say for TNA's aces and eights, I guess. Um, we had a filler match with Dolph Ziggler and Kobe Kingston. We've seen this match many times before. Really didn't care about this, but Dolph Ziggler got the win as we thought he may. It was just a way of getting him on the pay-per-view, I guess, because he could, wasn't going to cash his money on the bank in. Kofi almost, almost beat him, which was thinking, okay, that's not going to look good for Ziggler. But Ziggler getting the win thanks to uh, Biggie Langston. Big Langston, which they may have been teasing a feud after this match. I think this was okay. Zig, they, cause Sheamus said that oh, Ziggler's not even on the pay-per-view on Twitter. So now he's got him on there. Got him a match before the WrestleMania. I'm just looking forward to seeing how they build Ziggler up to WrestleMania now. The highlight for me was Biggie Langston kicking a hole in uh, Kobe Kingston's throat. Man, that was some pretty bad beat down right there. But moving on, Caitlin versus Tamina in a Divas match, which has barely really had any build. Um, so we really didn't care about it too much. The only thing that matters really is Caitlin wins and... Caitlin was trying to put over Tamina by saying she's the worst one I've been in the ring with, <laughs> Beth Phoenix. And the thing about this is the feud's over. Yeah, I mean, it was just a filler match, and I doubt there'll be a Divas Championship match at the WrestleMania. So, yeah, I mean, let's just move on to the main event. It was Rock and CM Punk um, for the WWE Championship. If Rock got counted out or disqualified, the result would go to CM Punk. I really felt that going into this match that WWE would have some kind of screwy finish here to have CM Punk win the match. But did you notice how The Rock got a lot of video package time here? It really it really signified to me that he was going to be winning this match and main event in WrestleMania 29 or else they wouldn't have given him all that video package time, promoted all his films and stuff. I really had no doubt that Rock would win after seeing all this all this promotion. I had, from the predictions to now, I didn't really think they would give it to uh, uh, CM, CM Punk. Punk. Yes, they were thinking, oh, the stipulation, CM Punk's going to win. That's what many people have mm. said, because the stipulation. But I didn't once think that they were going to swerve it. Maybe they've realised that they've got another match in mind for Punk. We have to see on the build to WrestleMania. But I think that Rock winning, it, it, this match did give us a few swerves, like, oh, it looks like Punk can win, mm. it looks like Rock can win. So I think the match was done correctly. The match was about, it went about 20, 21 minutes, which is a good length of a match, especially with Rock, who's not really a full-time wrestler anymore. I say this was a solid match. It was more really, it, it wasn't a very fast pace, but that doesn't mean it was a bad match. Uh, I think, a lot of people misunderstand that. Just because it's slow paced like a big show doesn't mean it's bad. This told a pretty decent story, in my opinion, with the punk trying to get the rock disqualified. Um, it was very dramatic as well. You had both of them kicking out of finishers. You had that dramatic people's elbow kick out where we thought, wow, the rock has won this. You had points in time where you thought CM Punk had won this. And I thought it, they did a good job in building the drama for CM Punk possibly winning, especially with the stipulation there, which really had, I guess, a lot of people thinking that CM Punk has everything on his side, which is exactly what a heel should have, compared to Rock, who had pretty much nothing on his side. I think this match, again, I, I can't fault this match. The referee bumps at first, I thought was going to lead to Cena or Lesnar, but the fact it just led to some quick hits moves, another ref to run down, I, I, I thought this was a good match. Better than the last match. Yeah, I feel I felt that too. I honestly did. And Rock gets the clean victory here. So it's going to be Rock versus Cena 2 at WrestleMania. I know a lot of people don't like it, but we've got to look at it from a business standpoint, people. And also, I believe this may mean that Undertaker may be healthy enough to face CM Punk. Do you feel that might be why they had... I think the reason why they put that stipulation in there was so if Taker wasn't healthy, they may have Punk in a triple threat match. But I think now they've done this, it shows that Taker could be healthy to face CM Punk at Mania. Even if he is healthy, I don't think it's going to be that fair on Taker because he was only... He, for about a few weeks ago, he was hinted not to wrestle. And all of a sudden, it looks like he's possibly going to wrestle. So he may not be in the best shape even if he does face Punk. I think maybe in the build to WrestleMania, they should still give us the triple threat. Or maybe they've got a backup opponent other than Taker. I just would like to see what they do. If it is Taker, 
I would like to see how Taker performs. I mean, if CM Punk, CM Punk lost clean to The Rock twice now, so you can't really see him getting back involved with The Rock and Cena and the WWE Championship. So you have to imagine the reason WWE had Rock win clean here was because they have some other plans for CM Punk, which to me does signify Undertaker, because I don't think any other opponent, in my opinion, will really be a big enough match for a guy like CM Punk, who's been the WWE Champion for, it was a WWE Champion for 440, 50 plus days. So, I don't know. The Rock and Cena 2, we're on the road to that one now, so you're going to get you're going to get pretty much the same old build as you had last time, but with the WWE Championship in there. What did you feel about this pay-per-view as a whole, MJ? Okay, I, there are some matches that I didn't care about, some matches that were okay but not brilliant. The match that counted for me was the Chamber and the main event. So overall, I think it was a good pay-per-view, a pay-per-view I would watch again for the things we got, but it weren't, some of the matches just didn't do much for me. I thought, honestly, um, it was a pretty decent pay-per-view. I must admit, I didn't feel tired. I, I felt very awake and alert throughout this whole pay-per-view, which is a sign that the pay-per-view is definitely entertaining me, considering it doesn't really take much for me to fall asleep to WWE. I thought the main event was very dramatic and very well booked. I felt the chamber match was a very good match itself. Shield versus the Breakfast Club, I also felt was a good... The opener, I also felt, was a decent match as well. So all in all, I really felt this was a very solid to good pay-per-view by WWE. I really did. I'd give this like a B minus. That's a long time since we graded the pay-per-view, but I'd give this like a B minus. I really I thought it was a, especially giving us some build going into WrestleMania. We know we know we're gonna have Lesnar, Triple H, we know we're gonna have the Rock and Cena now. So it's given us now we're gonna have Swagger versus Del Rio. So it's given us some build as to what we're gonna get to WrestleMania 2, which is essentially what Elimination Chamber is all about. I'm pretty much gonna give this a B because we had I said two earlier, but yes, there was the the uh, Breast Breakfast Club versus the Shield, which is a third match. So there's about three matches here. I'm going to give thumbs up to. The other matches were okay, just not as good as those three. So I'm going to give it a B. I enjoyed this. So let me know your thoughts, or let us indeed know your thoughts on this pay per view down in the comment section below. And uh, NJ, could you please end this video with a bang? What's up? Now, people, thank you very much for all your what's up. You've kept them coming. Please keep them coming because there's going to be some more on my channel. And all I'm going to say, people, is hope you enjoyed the pay-per-view. Please look out for our Raw Rundown on Tuesday. And for Mr. Parkin and me, NJ, you've been the viewers watching. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for all the birthday wishes. And from the sponsors of Monster, <laughs> goodbye. And roll the what's up outro. Here's my what's up video. What's up? What's up? Yeah. What's up? 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 Motherfucker. And that, gentlemen, is what's up.